what's going on everybody it's shiffle penguin here back with another video today we're getting into the top five non-bait builds for 3.19 lake of calandra this build has a good number of changes to things like uniques a few nerfs and a few buffs to other skills but overall most of the builds that were used in 3.18 can also be used in 3.19 in case you guys were wondering but i'm going to be referencing the five builds that i know that are great one of them is uh might be bait but other than that, I know a lot of people are going to be trying it out. There's a lot of content creators that are doing this as their league start. Um, it's one of the new skills, but we'll be getting into the five builds I recommend to you guys. The first build I'm going to be talking about is the Spectral Helix Deadeye that I made for the past two or three leagues. And it's a very, very strong league start. One of the smoothest leveling builds you can play in the game. Very smooth leveling all the way up until like red maps. Um, a lot of builds struggle when you go and get into like late yellows mid yellows um, even some red maps and uh, you start to feel the pain points of your build and spectral helix really passes that by you do have a few pain points but um, pretty much upgrading your claw and making sure you follow the build guide will pretty much always fix any of the problems you're having uh, this build is really good it can do the bosses it's really smooth for mapping um, it's very very fun one of the smoothest and easiest builds to play so if you're a new player I highly recommend you play Spectral Helix Deadeye. It is one of the easiest starters in the game. Uh, another good thing about the build is that it's a really good transition build for um, if you're interested in Lightning Strike. Uh, Lightning Strike Raider is a very common and meta archetype that you can play. And this build is really good at transitioning into that because there's a lot of the similar nodes. Uh, you just have to respect your ascendancy and you're good to go. And also Lightning Strike isn't great to use during the beginning of the leagues and you get a lot of currency for it. I can go on and on about Spectral Helix, so you're gonna have to check out my video guide and my leveling guide that I have posted down below if you wanna hear more about it. The second build we're getting to is Spark Inquisitor by Garatha. This build is really strong, really great for hardcore SSF, really good for boss killing. Mapping's not too bad either. So this build overall is another really, really great build. Uh, the benefits of this build is that Inquisitor is really, really good at scaling defense. Uh, you get some insane uh, life regen and energy shield regen because you share your uh, regen values. So if you get a hybrid life pool, uh, you get some really huge numbers. And then if you get a glorious vanity, you're making abusing that double regen to the max. So this build is, can be very tanky. You can just face tank some bosses once you have enough investment, as well as having... Um, some pretty good damage output uh, lightning damage is a, is a really good damage source it is getting a few new nodes so it's going to be really good uh, scaling crit with this build because inquisitor gets some really good crit and damage pen and overall this build is great for uh, doing the pinnacle bosses because uh, if you have enough projectile speed you can have it bounce off the walls and you'll hit multiple of the pinnacle bosses uh, when you're doing the Maven's Invitations and all that stuff. So this build is really good for a lot of different farming methods. Uh, it can be pushed to do some Delirium. I've seen some other people do some uh, fully juiced Delirium maps on Spark once you get enough investment. But as a leak starter, this build is just very, very strong as is. Uh, you just get like a plus one lightning scepter or wand. Uh, you get some cast speed and a little bit of crit and you're looking really good on this build The third build we're gonna be talking about is lightning conduit um, Elementalist by Zai this build looks like it could be bait But overall this build has some really good looking POB. So I believe it's gonna be really good It has some really good POB numbers. It looks really uh, solid on paper, but we know that that doesn't always pan out for how the uh, the game actually is uh, we know POB isn't everything, so there are some options that, like, if it goes wrong, um, what to swap to. So don't worry about that um, if you follow the guide that I link down below. This build looks really fun because uh, it is very unique in that you have to shock all the, your enemies first and then hit Lightning Conduit. So it is a two-button build, but it looks like it pushes out some crazy damage. And there's going to be some really cool and unique ways to apply shock to enemies. Um, maybe even late game, people are going to find maybe some uh, cast on crit, crash wall channeling stuff to apply the lightning conduit so we can have some automated stuff. There's some high potential for this build. 
So a lot of build creators are going to be looking at this skill to make builds around. But Lightning Conduit, just as a leak start, does look solid, um, especially with the overcharge support added into it that gives skills uh, less damage, but it makes them shock more. And that's all we care about because the higher the shock value, the more damage Lightning Conduit, which is the, the main skill we're using for damage. So this build looks like it could be very, very good, but also keep in mind, this is a very new skill. No one has tested it out yet, so we don't know actually how good it's going to be. So keep that in mind when you're making your build choice. The fourth build we're going to be going over is the Righteous Fire Inquisitor by the one and only Pox. This build is very, very smooth. This build is one of the favorable play styles by majority of the community, and Pox, who has written one of the most well-known guides for this build uh just pretty much any question you can have about the build it's probably already been asked by someone else and answered by pox so he has a huge uh page just filled with questions and answers he has multiple videos on the build um and progressing it uh how to level up through the axe uh, what to look for in end game, all that kind of stuff is pretty much solved. So look on Pox's channel for that. Um, link in description for the 3.19 variant and leg start version. And uh, yeah, Righteous Fire, just favorable play style. There is a pair of boots that is best in slot for this build to make the clearing very good. Um, so that pair of boots is going to be very expensive for the first week of league and probably get cheaper as the league goes on. But this build is going to be one of the most popular builds played in this league i believe at least for the first few weeks so it's going to be pretty expensive to get your hand on those boots otherwise righteous fire is one of the best play styles you can have in the game uh and uh if you enjoy just having this circle degen around you and you just do nothing except for walk near enemies this is a play style for you the last build we're going to be going over today is the explosive arrow ballista build this is an ignite based build so it is damage over time build used and you use totems so it is a very unique play style the elementalist version is going to be made by palestron the elementalist version is the high damage variant that you play probably for something like softcore and then there's a champion version that you play if you're a hardcore now this build is very very strong it did get a slight nerf so it got buffed on the on hit portion and nerfed on the uh, damage over time but overall, it is a very small nerf because Ignite is based, uh, bases its damage over time on the on-hit portion. So it got a buff and then a nerf. So overall, it's a slight nerf. But really, don't worry about it. You don't have to think about it that much. It is very small. Uh, an Explosive Arrow is going to be probably still a top three build this league for pushing bosses, early game. Just the most played in the first two weeks. I think Explosive Arrow, Ballista is going to be top three still um this league and it's been the top three for the past three leagues so this build very very strong very meta um if you're interested in something very easy to play for bosses uh really easy play style because totems on bosses are very easy because you don't have to like worry about your damage uptime you can place all your totems and then walk around and avoid mechanics if you're um not very comfortable with the mechanics of the boss. Uh, totems are a really good playstyle to get used to it just because you're not punished as much. Because, uh, yeah, things like traps, totems, and mines, you can't get punished. You don't get punished as hard if you uh, can't attack every second on the boss. But overall, this build, very, very strong. Highly recommend it. And those are the five builds I recommend you guys for 3.19 Lake of Kalandra League. This league's going to be very fun. A lot of meta things that were uh, done in 3.18 are still great in 3.19, as well as the uh, few new changes to uh, a lot of the uniques. It's going to be very interesting to play this league with some potential good uniques uh, to really change up the dynamic of what builds are super meta. Hopefully we figure out new builds as the league goes on with the new uniques as well as the new mechanic in the Mirror of Kalandra League where you can like double rolls on your jewelry and then you negate rolls on your jewelry. That seems like a really cool, um, fun thing to toy with during the league to get some really insane crafted gear. Looks really fun and I can't wait to play it. I hope you guys are excited for this league too and I can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Later.